so glad to have each and every one of you in the house of the Lord with us today. So glad that the presence of the Lord is here with us today. I'm going to be sharing with you this morning a Mother's Day message to all women. Mother's Day message to all women. And I'm going to be using one verse from Proverbs 31, verse 10 this morning as our scripture text. And in your private time and in your devotion time, take the time to read this proverb beginning with verse 10 throughout the remainder of Proverbs 31 very wonderful, beautiful passage of scripture written to encourage and bless and honor women. The word of God tells us in Proverbs 31 and 10, ask the question, so who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. As we look at this verse of scripture, the same verse of scripture in the message translation, it asks the question, or makes a statement, rather it says a good woman is hard to find. A good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. I want to take a moment to Honor mothers everywhere. We've all had them. They've all been an inspiration to us and have had an impact on our life. And, and we are who we are today in part as a result of our mothers. Jackie and I were talking yesterday <coughs> as it was and said, you know, there's not a basket of flowers big enough or there's not a meal that we could prepare or nothing else that we can do for that matter that could ever be adequate, could never be enough to tell our moms just how thankful we were or we are for all that they have done for us yes. in our lifetimes. <coughs> Our mothers are gone. They're not with us. We miss them daily. Yes. We talk often how much we miss our parents and how much that we wish we had just one more opportunity to hear their voice. <clears throat> just one more opportunity to speak to them and let them know how much we love them. But one day soon, if those that have lost parents and their parents died knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to be reunited. We'll never be separated. We'll never be parted again. We'll be together always. Now, I know this is our first Mother's Day together in this building as, as the church. Some that have heard me before uh, said under my ministry, maybe in other places, whatever they know, that I don't really put a whole lot of emphasis in a lot of programming and a lot of things in regards to Mother's Day because, to be quite honest with you, sometimes it can be hurtful. Because there are women in the congregation that may not be a mother for whatever the reason. And they feel excluded. How do you know that? Because I've had some tell me this. I've had some literally tell me that they stay home on Mother's Day because it is too painful. And I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't want to see anybody offended. I don't want to see anybody, you know, not feel that, they, that they're a part of what we do in the house of God. 
For those of you that are mothers, I honor you and I, I applaud you and I commend you to the highest degree. For some of you that may not be mothers that are in our midst this morning, I applaud you, I commend you to the highest degree just the same because you are having an impact on people whether you realize it or not. See, throughout the year, history of America, women have played important roles in important parts. Back when I was going to school and, 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 and you know, they used to teach real history rather than some of this stuff that they teach today. They used to teach us, and I can remember, and there's far too many to try to mention, but I can remember some of the women that they would teach us and some of the contributions that they have made to America down through the years to make this nation great. Amen. That without their contribution, this nation might not be exactly what it is today. Amen. I read throughout Scripture, and there's no exception throughout Scripture. Can I tell you that in Scripture, women played an important role. They weren't slaves. They weren't floor mats. They weren't a lesser class of people. God created woman equal with man. She didn't create woman to walk behind man three paces with her head down. She created man and brought woman to man's side to go through this life together with him. Equally. What does the Bible say about the role of the woman? We begin to read and study scripture and we find through scripture that the word sees the role of women as that of a mentor. To teach and train and nurture this generation as well as future generations. Women have a way of being able to instruct better than men. Women teachers are far better than male teachers. I've had some good male teachers. I'm, I'm not saying that I haven't, but some, probably some of the better teachers I've ever had have been women. Women have a way of instructing. Women have a way of, of getting the point across. And today, women have been called, according to Scripture, to be mentors. Women today, throughout, and as we begin to look at the in Scripture, we find that women, God often used women as evangelists. He often used women to get his message out. Some of the first, the, the, the first message of, uh, on the first Easter morning, if you remember correctly, reading in the, the New Testament, the, it wasn't a man that gave the news that, that, that Jesus Christ was alive. It was a woman. God chose women to carry the first gospel message. And women also have the responsibility, according to Scripture, to be that of a role model, to be that of an example for others to follow, that they can feel like Paul, the apostle, as he penned in the New Testament, follow me as I follow Christ. My friend, let me tell you, a godly woman, a woman whose heart is fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ can be an example, can be a role model for others to follow, and you can follow them as they follow Christ. See, Byron never devalues women. The Bible never devalues their intellect. The Bible never devalues their downplays, their talents. Are their abilities? Or the Bible never discourages or downplays the spiritual gifts that have been given to women. In fact, it does quite the opposite. I had looked at 
thinking of listing some of the women in the Bible that God used for various things. And I found the list was just too, too, too great to spend in our short time that we have together here this morning. But there are a couple that I want to mention this morning because it shows how God used and utilized these women for His kingdom, for His glory, and for His purpose. You say, well, what's the reason for that? Because God still uses women today for His kingdom, for His glory, and for His purpose. We will look first at Deborah. According to the Old Testament book of Judges, Deborah was a prophetess. What does that mean? That means she was the female version of a prophet. In Old Testament times, the prophets were God's spokesperson. The prophet lived a life close to God, near God's heart. God would speak to them. And they would speak to the people whatever direction, whatever word, whatever encouragement, whatever rebuke, whatever it was that God wanted to speak to his nation, he spoke through the prophet. And Deborah was a prophetess utilizing her spiritual gift that God had given her to be God's spokesman. Not only was Deborah a prophetess, Deborah was a judge. Yes. Now, a judge in those days had probably more, more authority than our president does today. To our president has Congress and Senate and advisors and this and this kind of helping him to govern the, the nation. The judge in those days was the governing force. Whatever they said was law. And Deborah was a judge. That people would come to her with questions. And people would come to her with their problems. And people would come to her with their, with, 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 with their, their needs. And Deborah would discern. And Deborah would make judgment calls on behalf of the needs of the people. There was a time in the scripture account of Deborah's life and her time as, as a judge in Israel where the Lord had impressed her and she went to her command, her, her, her leader of her military. And she laid out a battle plan. She told him uh, something that, that how he was to come against their enemy that they were about to go to war with. This commander, he, he followed her instruction. He followed her direction. They won the battle. They won the victory. And then instead of Deborah in her, in, in Judges chapter 5, verse 31, that, that there was peace in the land for 40 years. What a remarkable woman this must have been. Because from some of the male judges, that had ruled over Israel couldn't always say that about them. <laughs> but this special woman was able to do what some men could not do. Then my heart and my mind went to Esther. We read of Esther and her the, 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 the writing in the Old Testament, the book of Esther, named after her. And we see that Esther was a Jewish queen under King Arabin. Arabin, Arabin. I can't ever say that word. And this king was the king of Persia. And under his kingdom, there were Jewish people there, Esther being one of them. Well, the king had a chief advisor by the name of Haman. And Haman hated Esther's cousin, who was also her guardian. He despised him and he hated him and he wanted him dead. And Haman, through some deception and through some, some, some trickery, he had the king to 
pronounce a decree that all the Jewish people in the Persian Empire would be destroyed, put to death. Esther, under great risk of her own life and safety and her own well-being, while she could have as queen just set her idly by and let this happen, she stood up for God's people. She stood up for the Jewish people in the Persian kingdom. She approached the king and she made a petition and she made a request to the king and they found grace and found favor with the king because she had God's spirit upon her. She had God's anointing upon her and she found favor with that king and the, the, the plot against the Jewish people was turned around. And in fact, the same gallows that Haman wanted to hang Mordecai and the other Jews upon, he himself was hanged upon that same gallows. All because of a godly woman. I want to tell you something today. I am so glad that we have godly women. I am so glad this morning that we have godly God-fearing, God-living women that know how to live for God, that know how to be led of God, that know how to be used of God, that they're, that they're willing to let God use them. Because I'm going to tell you, this world has been a far better place because of godly women. See, what is the, God, the, the, the goal of a godly woman? Her first priority is a right relationship with God the Father. A right relationship. She loves, she knows about the love of God firsthand. She has experienced the love of God firsthand. She has experienced His grace. She has experienced His mercy. She has experienced His, his, his compassion. She has experienced what it is to walk with Him. And she is a reflection of that to others. She knows what God's love is and therefore she loves others as God loves her. I've seen a few godly women in my life that I've had the privilege of knowing that I can really say they were really true women of God. And one thing you can always say about them is they had a heart of love for their fellow man. The second goal of a godly woman is to set priorities with God being her first priority. I want to tell you something, church. This is something that has fallen by the wayside in our culture today is putting God first. But a godly woman knows that if she wants success in her home, that if she wants success in her life, that if she wants success for her family, that if she wants success for her siblings, that if she wants success for anything that pertains to her, she's got to put God first. And God is her first priority. As it should be even with us men. The third goal of a godly woman is that of faith. A godly woman trusts God literally at his word. There's a saying that said, if Jesus said it, I believe that settles. A godly woman knows that statement is only partially true because if Jesus said it, that settles it whether I believe it or not. And a godly woman knows that if God says it, that settles it. And she puts her trust, she puts her faith, she puts everything she lives by faith, trusting and depending that God's word is true. Even though sometimes she may not can see it with her eyes, she may not can touch it with her hands, and there may be those who tell her how crazy she is for trusting and believing, still she keeps on keeping on. Because she's a godly woman and a godly woman of faith. One of the other goals of a godly woman is a woman who guards her words. Godly women guard their words because they understand 
what the word teaches that life and death is in the power of the tongue. The words that come out of our mouth can either build up, bring life, or they can tear down and destroy. And a godly woman understands this. A godly woman knows this. And she chooses her words very carefully. She takes the word serious. When it talks about letting no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. She takes the word seriously when she, when, when, when she uses her, her voice to bless those things that God has blessed. Yes. Realizing that her voice is God's ambassador to the world around her. Thank God for godly women. But what does a godly woman look like, Pastor? That depends on who you ask, I suppose. Because if you were to stand on a street corner and ask a hundred people to give their definition of what a godly woman is to look like, you would probably get a hundred different answers of what they think a godly woman is supposed to look like. But can I tell you, man often looks at on the outward. And they tell you, and I, I promise you, if you were to ask these people, well, what does a godly woman look like? They would begin to tell you that she, uh, something about her outward appearance. Now there's nothing wrong with her outward appearance. But I'm going to tell you something. Have you ever seen a godly woman, and I have, I've been privileged, that there was just something about their countenance that they glowed? They might not have been a beauty queen. They might not have ever been able to win a beauty contest by man standard, but there was just something about their countenance that had a glow about them because it wasn't what's on the outside, it was what's on the inside Amen. that mattered. Amen. They had Jesus Christ on the inside. He was living on the inside, showing on the outside. This proverb that I was talking, telling you, reading from this morning is a beautiful description of a godly woman. Divinely inspired and orchestrated by God as the Holy Spirit moved upon those who penned this word to give us God's viewpoint, God's heart concerning the godly, godly woman. Ladies, hear me this morning. God created you in His image, in His likeness, for His purpose. If you are a mother, you are a wife, God has a plan for you. For those who may not be married, for those who may not be mothers, God still has a plan for you. God uses mothers and wives to further His kingdom, but God also uses those who never are biological birth mothers and those who may never marry. He still uses them to further his kingdom. Keeping that in mind, this proverb wasn't written to make a woman feel guilty or out of place or, 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 or to try to place some unrealistic expectation upon their life. It was written to build up our faith and to show our God-given potential of what God can do through your life. So we don't hear words like virtue used very much anymore, do we? It's one of those words that has kind of fallen by the wayside. But God talked about a virtuous woman, a woman of value, a woman of worth. And what is a woman of worth? We find an outline in his scripture. It's a woman of faith. It's a woman that has turned her life over to him 
and lets him lead it and guide it. And she tries to be an example of him to this world. We look in, in this Proverbs that we're reading about. And verse 20 describes the compassion of a godly woman. Godly women are compassionate women. Godly women have a heart for people. Godly women have a heart for the brokenhearted. Godly women have a heart that goes beyond its describing sometimes of wanting to see people the downtrodden, those that are in, in need, those that they, they, they have such a love and a compassion for them. Something that our world has let slip and fall away. A godly woman in verse 26 of this Proverbs always gives godly counsel. The thing about a godly woman is that godly woman will always point you to the word of God. You can always go to a godly woman and ask her advice and understand that a godly woman is always going to give you the word of God. You might not always like what she has to say because it might not want to go with what your plans and what your agenda are, but a godly woman will always point you to the word of God and let you make your own choice, let you make your own decisions. I thank God today that there have been those that are godly women that we could have, and, 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 you know, I say this, and I'm sure some of us may have went to women, godly women in our lives and asked for advice, asked them for counsel, asked them for direction, asked them. And if we have, I thank God that they have been there. And I pray for those that are under the sound of my voice this morning that you strive in your heart to be that godly woman that if someone comes to you and asks you for direction and asks you for, for, for something, that you can point them to the Word of God. But I do want to, to, to tell you now, they're not always going to like it. They're not always going to want to hear it. They may, they may not always follow your counsel. We always point them to the Word. What does a godly woman look like? No better way to say it. She looks like Christ. A godly woman is the mirrored reflection and the mirrored image of Jesus Christ to this world. You read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we see how Jesus was in this life. And we can see a godly woman being a reflection of this. Christ-like ladies are an example that all can follow. Ladies, there's nothing wrong with your outward appearance where you want to look. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to look good. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to feel good about yourself. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to be, to, 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 to achieve goals and have dreams and want things for yourself and for your family. But with God's is our first priority. With God is our first and foremost. The Word tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these other things in our life will be added to us. Throughout Scripture, godly women have turned the tide and made a difference in many circumstances and in many situations. And in the hour that we're living today, we need more godly women that can turn the tide. More godly women that can be the vessel of that, with the Spirit of God flowing through them 
to be the role model, to be the mentor, to be the evangelist that God would have you to be to make this world in which we live today a better place. Thank God for you ladies that are here today. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your love. Thank God for your, for, for your prayers. Thank God for all that you do for your families, for the church, and for the kingdom of God. And know this, that you are special in God's sight and in God's heart. Today, on this day that has been set aside and called Mother's Day, if you're a mother, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. You may not be a biological mother, but you are a woman. You are created under the, in the image of God. We commend you. We applaud you equally because you are a value. You are a worth in God's sight. Precious Lord of Heaven, we love you today. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We ask you, Lord God of Heaven, to help us today to give tribute where tribute and honor is due. Lord God of Heaven, I pray for every woman under the sound of my voice, godly women, Lord of Heaven, that you would touch them and bless them, strengthen them and help them, use them and utilize them according to your will, in Jesus' name, and amen.